Lesson 8 Seeing the Invisible Sabbath Afternoon August 13 It is faith that enables us to look beyond the present, with its burdens and cares, to the great hereafter, where all that now perplexes us shall be made plain. Faith sees Jesus standing as our mediator at the right hand of God. Faith beholds the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for those who love him. Faith sees the robe and crown prepared for the overcomer and hears the song of the redeemed. Faith is not feeling. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. True faith is in no sense allied to presumption. Only he who has true faith is secure against presumption, for presumption is Satan's counterfeit of faith. Gospel Workers, pages 259 and 260. Many have their present wants supplied, yet they will not trust the Lord for the future. They manifest unbelief and sink into despondency and gloom at anticipated want. Some are in continual trouble lest they shall come to want and their children suffer. When difficulties arise or when they are brought into straight places, when their faith and their love to God are tested, they shrink from the trial and murmur at the process by which God has chosen to purify them. Their love does not prove pure and perfect to bear all things. The faith of the people of the God of heaven should be strong, active, and enduring, the substance of things hoped for. Then the language of such will be, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me bless his holy name for he hath dealt bountifully with me. The Story of Redemption, pages 128 and 129. Jesus does not call on us to follow him and then forsake us. If we surrender our lives to his service, we can never be placed in a position for which God has not made provision. Whatever may be our situation, we have a guide to direct our way. Whatever our perplexities, we have a sure counselor. Whatever our sorrow, bereavement, or loneliness, we have a sympathizing friend. If in our ignorance we make missteps, Christ does not leave us. His voice, clear and distinct, is heard saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14, verse 6. He shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. Psalm 72. Verse 12, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. The arm of omnipotence is outstretched to lead us onward and still onward. Go forward, the Lord says, I will send you help. It is for my name's glory that you ask, and you shall receive. Those who are watching for your failure shall yet see my word triumph gloriously. All things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Matthew chapter 21 verse 22. Gospel Workers, page 263. Sunday, August 14. Our Father's Extravagance The Father's presence encircled Christ, and nothing befell him but that which infinite love permitted for the blessing of the world. Here was his source of comfort, and it is for us. He who is imbued with the Spirit of Christ abides in Christ. Whatever comes to him comes from the Savior who surrounds him with his presence. Nothing can touch him except by the Lord's permission. All our sufferings and sorrows, all our temptations and trials, all our sadness and griefs, all our persecutions and privations, in short, all things work together for our good. All experiences and circumstances are God's workmen whereby good is brought to us. The Ministry of Healing, pages 488 
and 489. God's love is so broad, so deep, so full, that it penetrates everywhere. It lifts out of Satan's influence those who have been deluded by his deceptions and places them within reach of the throne of God, the throne encircled by the rainbow of promise. God is our Father and Governor. The principles which rule in heaven should rule upon earth, the same love that animates the angels, the same purity and holiness that reign in heaven, should, as far as possible, be reproduced upon earth. If you call God your Father, you acknowledge yourselves His children to be guided by His wisdom and to be obedient in all things, knowing that His love is changeless. You will accept His plan for your life. As children of God, you will hold His honor, His character, His family, His work as the objects of your highest interest. It will be your joy to recognize and honor your relation to your father and to every member of his family. You will rejoice to do any act, however humble, that will tend to his glory or to the well-being of your kindred. The Faith I Live By, page 65 When God gave himself in Christ for the sin of the world, he undertook the case of every soul. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Romans chapter 8 verse 32 Will he not fulfill the gracious word given for our encouragement and strength? Christ desires nothing so much as to redeem his heritage from the dominion of Satan. But before we are delivered from Satan's power without, we must be delivered from His power within. The Lord permits trials in order that we may be cleansed from earthliness, from selfishness, from harsh, unchristlike traits of character. He suffers the deep waters of affliction to go over our souls in order that we may know Him and Jesus Christ whom He has sent, in order that we may have deep heart longings to be cleansed from defilement and may come forth from the trial purer, holier, happier. Often we enter the furnace of trial with our souls darkened with selfishness. But if patient under the crucial test, we shall come forth reflecting the divine character. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 174 and 175. Monday, August 15. In the name of Jesus. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. John chapter 14, verse 14. In my name, Christ bade his disciples pray. In Christ's name, his followers are to stand before God. Through the value of the sacrifice made for them, they are of value in the Lord's sight. Because of the imputed righteousness of Christ, they are accounted precious. For Christ's sake, the Lord pardons those that fear Him. He does not see in them the vileness of the sinner. He recognizes in them the likeness of His Son, in whom they believe. The Lord is disappointed when His people place a low estimate upon themselves. He desires His chosen heritage to value themselves according to the price He has placed upon them. God wanted them, else he would not have sent his son on such an expensive errand to redeem them. He has a use for them, and he is well pleased when they make the very highest demands upon him that they may glorify his name. They may expect larger things if they have faith in his promises. The Desire of Ages, pages 667 and 668. To talk of religion in a casual way, to pray without soul hunger and living faith avails nothing. A nominal faith in Christ which accepts Him merely as the Savior of the world can never bring healing to the soul. The faith that is unto salvation is not a mere intellectual assent to the truth. He who waits for entire knowledge before he will exercise faith cannot receive blessing from God. It is not enough to believe about Christ. We must believe in Him. The only faith that will benefit us is that which embraces Him as a personal Savior, which appropriates His merits to ourselves. 
Many hold faith as an opinion, but saving faith is a transaction by which those who receive Christ join themselves in covenant relation with God. Genuine faith is life. A living faith means an increase of vigor, a confiding trust by which the soul becomes a conquering power. Gospel Workers, pages 260 and 261. The disciples met together to present their requests to the Father in the name of Jesus. They knew that they had a representative in heaven, an advocate at the throne of God. In solemn awe they bowed in prayer, repeating the assurance, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. John chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. Higher and still higher, they extended the hand of faith with the mighty argument, It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. As the disciples waited for the fulfillment of the promise, they humbled their hearts in true repentance and confessed their unbelief. As they called to remembrance the words that Christ had spoken to them before his death, they understood more fully their meaning. As they meditated upon his pure, holy life, they felt that no toil would be too hard, no sacrifice too great, if only they could bear witness in their lives to the loveliness of Christ's character. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 35 and 36. Tuesday, August 16. The Power of the Resurrection To the believer, Christ is the resurrection and the life. In our Savior, the life that was lost through sin is restored, for He has life in Himself to quicken whom He will. He is invested with the right to give immortality. The life that He laid down in humanity, He takes up again and gives to humanity. I am come, He said, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10. The same power that raised Christ from the dead will raise His church and glorify it with Him above all principalities, above all powers, above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. The Desire of Ages, pages 786 and 787. We may rejoice in hope. Our Advocate is in the heavenly sanctuary pleading in our behalf. Through His merits, we have pardon and peace. He died that He might wash away our sins, clothe us with His righteousness, and fit us for the society of heaven where we may dwell in light forever. When Satan would fill your mind with despondency, gloom, and doubt, Resist his suggestions. Tell him of the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all sin. You cannot save yourself from the tempter's power, but he trembles and flees when the merits of that precious blood are urged. Then will you not gratefully accept the blessings Jesus bestows? Will you not take the cup of salvation that he presents and call on the name of the Lord? If the loving kindness of God called forth more thanksgiving and praise, we would have far more power in prayer. We would abound more and more in the love of God and have more bestowed to praise Him for. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 316 and 317. Genuine faith is life, and where there is life, there is growth. The life which Jesus imparts cannot but grow more and more abundantly. A living faith means an increase of vigor, a confiding trust by which the soul becomes a conquering power. He who drinks of the water of life which Jesus gives possesses within himself a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Though it shall be cut off from all created springs, it is fed from the hidden fountain. It is a perpetual spring in immediate communication with the inexhaustible fountain of life. The Lord is dishonored when any who profess His name have an emptiness. This misrepresents God. 
Nothing but Christ manifested in spirit and life and character can reveal God to a world that knows him not. The soul renewed in the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent demonstrates its divine fullness in a living, growing experience, even the fullness of him that filleth all things. That I may know him, page 227. Wednesday, August 17. To carry all our worry. The Lord desires us to appreciate the great plan of redemption, to realize our high privilege as the children of God, and to walk before Him in obedience with grateful thanksgiving. He desires us to serve Him in newness of life with gladness every day. He longs to see gratitude welling up in our hearts because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, because we may cast all our care upon Him who cares for us. He bids us rejoice because we are the heritage of the Lord, because the righteousness of Christ is the white robe of His saints, because we have the blessed hope of the soon coming of our Savior. To praise God in fullness and sincerity of heart is as much a duty as is prayer. We are to show to the world and to all the heavenly intelligences that we appreciate the wonderful love of God for fallen humanity and that we are expecting larger and yet larger blessings from His infinite fullness. Far more than we do, we need to speak of the precious chapters in our experience. After a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit, our joy in the Lord and our efficiency in His service would be greatly increased by recounting His goodness and His wonderful works in behalf of His children. These exercises drive back the power of Satan, they expel the spirit of murmuring and complaint, and the tempter loses ground. They cultivate those attributes of character which will fit the dwellers on earth for the heavenly mansions. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 299 and 300 Tenderly, Jesus bade the toiling people, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. In these words, Christ was speaking to every human being. Whether they know it or not, all are weary and heavy laden. All are weighed down with burdens that only Christ can remove. The heaviest burden that we bear is the burden of sin. If we were left to bear this burden, it would crush us. But the sinless one has taken our place. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. He invites us to cast all our care upon him, for he carries us upon his heart. He is watching over you, trembling child of God. Are you tempted? He will deliver. Are you weak? He will strengthen. Are you ignorant? He will enlighten. Are you wounded? He will heal. The Lord telleth the number of the stars, and yet he healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. Psalm 147, verses 4 and 3. Whatever your anxieties and trials, spread out your case before the Lord. Your spirit will be braced for endurance. The way will be open for you to disentangle yourself from embarrassment and difficulty. The weaker and more helpless you know yourself to be, the stronger will you become in his strength. The heavier your burdens, the more blessed the rest in casting them upon your burden bearer. The Ministry of Healing, pages 71 and 72. Thursday, August 18. Still faithful when God cannot be seen. Faith takes God at His word, not asking to understand the meaning of the trying experiences that come. But there are many who have little faith. They are always fearing and borrowing trouble. 
Every day they are surrounded by the tokens of God's love. Every day they enjoy the bounties of His providence, but they overlook these blessings. And the difficulties they encounter, instead of driving them to God, separate them from Him by arousing unrest and repining. Do they well to be thus unbelieving? Jesus is their friend. All heaven is interested in their welfare, and their fear and repining grieve the Holy Spirit. Not because we see or feel that God hears us are we to believe. We are to trust His promises. When we come to Him in faith, we should believe that every petition enters into the heart of Christ. When we have asked for His blessing, we should believe that we receive it and thank Him that we have it. Then we are to go about our duties assured that the blessing will be sent when we need it most. When we have learned to do this, we shall know that our prayers are answered. God will do for us exceeding abundantly according to the riches of His glory and the working of His mighty power. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20, 16, and 19. Gospel Workers, page 261. Workers for God will meet with turmoil, discomfort, and weariness. At times, uncertain and distracted, the heart is almost in despair. When this restless nervousness comes, the worker should stop and rest. Christ invites him, come apart and rest a while. Mark chapter 6, verse 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 29 to 31. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 27 verse 14. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 26. Lift him up, page 263. For further reading, That I may know him, I pray for guidance, page 266. And, Reflecting Christ, Prayer is appropriate anytime, anywhere. Page 122.